Soldiers of the Press. This week, Anzio Diary. Robert Vermillion, United Press Correspondent in Italy. It's my job to tell you people at home what's going on here on the beachhead at Anzio. It may sound funny to start telling you what things are like with something as unwarlike as a wedding, but it was a part of the ludicrous hodgepodge of war, and to those of us at the beachhead, it was a very touching event. If you've ever hitchhiked on a foggy highway back in the States and seen a pair of headlights approaching through the darkness, you get what I mean. It's a mighty black business on those few square miles in Italy. And a boy and a girl getting married in the midst of it was like seeing a couple of hundred dreams come true. Every one of the boys carries around a favorite dream in his pocket. Maybe it's a snapshot, maybe a letter. All those pictures and letters were rolled up into one when the wheezy old organ they managed to dig up started playing the old, familiar strains. Just plain getting married with a battle going on is no easy business. You couldn't be sure the German bombers wouldn't be over any minute. Oh, Jane, oh, you look adorable. You, you know, when I was a little girl, I, I always thought that I'd be married when the magnolia came out in our backyard. Mother used to tell me what she'd do to Grandma's wedding dress to make it do. You'll be a beautiful bride, honey, even without the magnolia. What do you mean? I wouldn't trade all the magnolia and old lace in the world for this. Why, Second Lieutenant Jane Sampson had a last assignment today. In one hour, it'll be Second Lieutenant Jane Clark. The magnolias can wait. What's borrowed, Jane? This handkerchief. It's Mary's. Oh, what's blue? Blue. Oh, I've forgotten that. I should have something blue, shouldn't I? Oh, of course you should. We'll have well, to find something blue. It, it wouldn't be... be right without it. And don't forget. It's all right. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, look out. There were two surprise raids while the bride was getting ready for the ceremony. Everybody dived for foxholes and then when the bombers disappeared, went on with things as if nothing had happened. One of the girls, a Red Cross worker, had seen to everything. She had persuaded the boys to collect old ammunition cases where the 300 nurses and soldiers were to sit. She'd even arranged for the wedding to be at 8.30 so the pair could be married with the minute hand on the down suite. All around us, the big guns were coughing and exploding, keeping up their deadly chorus as our small organ began to play. As the bride approached the crude altar, she looked as glowing and hopeful as if she'd been in the church at home. The officers and men stood at the worn-looking ammunition cases, and when they sat down, there was a low clatter as they put their helmets at their feet. I'd heard something about their romance. They'd met two years before at Camp Pickett, Virginia, but the bride told me it wasn't love at first sight. And then, in Sicily, they met again. Lieutenant Sampson, there's a gentleman waiting to see you. Oh, did he give his name? He said he was Lieutenant Clark. Lieutenant Clark? Really? I'll be right down. Why, hello, Jack. Hello. Oh, it certainly is a surprise to find you here. Well, I guess it is. I just found out your hospital unit was shipped here. Well, I thought I'd make another stab at sweeping you off your feet. <laughs> well, I wish you better luck this time. Oh, you don't understand. These are orders. I talked the case over with my commanding officer, and he agreed it was a matter of extreme importance. Oh? You are now a military objective. Well, in that case, maybe we'd better take a walk and talk it over. They had a lot of long walks and talks, and finally they applied for permission to get married. When the permit came through, they were both in Italy, but Lieutenant Clark said... We're not waiting another day, beachhead or no beachhead. That's how the first military wedding in Italy came about. That's how it happened that we were all standing there while the guns boomed all around 
And a boy and a girl who had fallen in love in the middle of war got married. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency, signifying unto us... It was a small, isolated event in a vast battlefield, but it had a lot of strength and reality. In a way, it was close to everyone there, because there were plenty of other things at the Anzio Beach had to make your heart get sick and twist with fury. There was death and destruction all around us. This little beachhead wedding was life, not death. And it was lifting and warming, almost a defiant gesture in the cruel face of war. And we had our fill of cruelty, too. Two nights after the wedding, the Germans bombed two American hospitals on the beachhead. The Germans came over around 10 o'clock, hurling incendiary bombs on the fragile hospital tents where our wounded were being cared for. When I reached the spot where the bombs had been dropped, fragments were still exploding, scattering burning steel through the frail canvas structures. I had to hit the dirt a couple of times to keep clear of those flying bits of fire. The whole hospital area was a weird hash of sound, color, and action. Bright flashes from the burning fragments, the low, barely audible groans and sobs from hurt men, the calls for litter bearers, the brisk, efficient handling of the wounded. I made my way to the nearest tent. The front had been ripped open by the explosion. It was dark inside. But I could hear the firm, even voice of a nurse quieting the men. The raid is over. You don't have to worry. Everything is all right now. I stepped inside, and the nurse brushed past me. Get me some stretchers, and get them quick. Inside, wounded men had jerked themselves from beds onto the floor, regardless of how badly hurt they were. Cots were tipped over. Men lay sprawled under the bedding and in the middle of the aisle. Some were struggling to get on their feet. The nurse tried to reassure them and make them comfortable until the wardmen arrived. One by one, the men stopped moaning. Then the only sound came from one boy I couldn't even see. It's all right. Everything is all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Yes. You'll be better soon. Help me, Mother. The litter bearers came and took out the men who were alive first. The boy calling for his mother was one of the first to be picked up. He was still crying out as they carried him from the tent. I couldn't help asking myself one question over and over. Did the Germans mark the hospital as a specific target? Was it deliberate? Who knows? May have been. After all, it isn't the first time. Yes. No, Major. Deliberate or not, it's done plenty of damage. How bad is it? Well, so far, one wounded soldier and one ward man have been killed. At least 56 others are badly injured. But the death toll may be higher. I don't know how many of the injured are going to live. That brought the total casualties from German bombing and shelling of American hospitals on the Anzio beachhead to 37 killed and 185 wounded. It's hard to believe that scene was taking place where there'd been a wedding two days before. But there are other things probably even harder for you back home to believe. For despite the bombings, there was a kind of normal community life on the Anzio beachhead. Commonplace things going on under fire, with the backdrop of war making them seem strange and unbelievable. Like the movie the Fifth Army puts on every night. I've gone to a couple of them. Once I happened into the projection room. Hi, have a million. Hi, Joe. Sounds like the boys are lapping it up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good flicker. Lots of laughs. Well, I can use them. Uh, you're not kidding. Cigarette, Joe? Uh, no, you can't smoke up there. You oh. know. Yeah, let's try them. What was that? It sounded like a shell exploding somewhere near this building. A shell explodes and the guys start laughing. I don't get it. Well, <laughs> that's because he can't see the screen. Oh. <laughs> right after the shell goes boom, the gal in the picture turns around and says... So what? <laughs> I'd like to tell you about one other thing that happened at Anzio. 
I heard about it the afternoon it happened, and I trooped down with a bunch of doughboys to watch. There, in the rolling surf of the Tyrrhenian Sea, one of our men was getting baptized. Dearly beloved, for as much as all men are conceived and born in sin, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and they who are in the flesh cannot please God but live in sin, committing many actual transgressions, and our Savior Christ saith, none can enter into the kingdom of God, except he be regenerate and born in The battle born never stopped sin. raging all around us, but there was time for a wedding and a baptism, simple things that seemed tremendous under fire. That's what it was like at the Anzio Beachhead, a bizarre kaleidoscope that shifted from scenes of sordid horror to scenes of ordinary fun, from scenes of pain and endurance to scenes of life and hope.